Hey everyone, this is immigration attorney Abisha Preek. I'm a nationwide practicing immigration attorney working out of my office here in New Jersey. Currently I'm working from home and making the videos from there as well. Today I wanted to talk about form I-864, the affidavit of support. Um, this is a form that you would submit when you are petitioning for a relative to come here to the U.S. on a green card or if you're applying for a relative who is applying for an adjustment of status here in the U.S. I'm not going to go over the entire form, but rather the most common mistakes that I see on the form so that if you are filling this out by yourself, that you don't make the same errors. Okay, so let's get right in. I have the form pulled up here on my computer, but I'm going to go ahead and put all the pages up here that I'm referring to so that you can follow along with me. Don't mind me, I'm just going to be looking at my screen majority of the time so that I can walk through each and every item that I think is important to highlight here, all right? Okay, we start with part one. So part one asks for your sponsor information. So if you are the petitioner, this is where you would enter your name. And if you um, are not the petitioner, but a joint sponsor, you would have to indicate in one of the boxes below. The tricky part here is that part one asks about the information about the petitioner or the sponsor, but then part two immediately switches to information about the principal immigrant. A lot of times what we see when I'm reviewing forms from clients who filed um, by themselves is that they'll include their information in part one and part two. So just be mindful that part two immediately switches to who you're petitioning for, which is the um, intending immigrant, all right? Part three. So in here, you would indicate that, yes, I'm. if you are petitioning for, let's say, a husband or a wife, you're petitioning for that person above. Um, in my example, let's say you're also petitioning for um, your children who are outside of the United States. So your children are joining your spouse to come here and you're filing an affidavit of support um, with NBC. So here, um, on the bottom, it asks you to fill out the information of all joining family members. However, if you are a green card holder who's applying for a spouse, then everyone would be included in the same petition. But as you know, um, US citizens have to file separately for spouse, children, and parents. So all these petitions have to go out separately. So if you're petitioning for a spouse, um, you would not include your children's information on this form. You would have to fill out a separate 864 form for their petition as well and file it separately. So a lot of times what we see is that um, there will be a family of three, you know, one spouse and two children, and the petitioner just fills out one 864 form and includes their names in um, the one form itself. You, CIS and NBC will not accept that. So you do have to go and fill out a separate 864 form for each person. So you would not include their information in part three, family members who are joining because um, they have their separate petition of their own. This is simply for those who are underneath the same petition. So um, relatives of green card holders, or if you're a brother or sister of a US citizen um, or child of a US citizen, um, and your entire family is going to be joining you, you would include your information there because you're all included in the same petition. But spouses and children of U.S. citizens and parents of U.S. citizens all require a separate form for each of their petitions, all right? We'll move down to part four. Um, this part is pretty straightforward. So, um, now we've moved from the intending immigrants information back to you, the sponsor here. So you would enter your information here, your name, your address, your mailing address, um, your country of domicile. And then let's get to page number four. Okay, so this one is a little bit tricky um, because sometimes you may not be able to add the numbers correctly for your household size. So let's say, like I said in my example, that you are filing for your husband or wife, all right? And so in part one, you enter the number that you entered in part three, item 29. So that's the number of immigrants you're sponsoring. So here you would put one for your spouse, one for yourself. Number three asks if you're currently married, enter one for your spouse. But you already entered one for your spouse above who is the intending immigrant. 
So actually you leave number three blank um, since you're repeating the spouse again. So you would leave that one blank because you've already included your spouse in um, number one of this part. Okay, number five, if you have any other dependents, enter the number here. So if you have other dependents, other children that you're supporting, um, if you have parents that live with you that you show as dependents in your tax returns, you would enter this number in part five. Number six, if you've sponsored any other persons on Form 864 who are now lawful permanent residents, enter the number here. Okay, here is the tricky part. So let's say you filed a petition for your parents uh, maybe six months ago and their I-130 has been approved, but you haven't received a, deci received a decision on their case yet. So it hasn't been approved um, by NBC, but you're still waiting and you're filling out the Form 864 for your spouse and your parents at the same time. Technically, you do not have to include your parents in this because until their case is approved, you are not liable under the 864 contract. However, if you file for your parents and their case was approved, you know, two years ago, and they're currently living with you and you're supporting them as dependents, you would have to go ahead and include that number in number six. Another scenario, your parents have been green card holders for um, more than 10 years. Um, you are no longer responsible um, under the 864 contract if they've been working here and they have their 40 quarters. So you can go ahead and put zero if that's the case. But if a green card holder has a green card, their case has been approved and you sponsored them and they haven't worked 40 quarters um, or been a green card holder for 10 years, then you would go ahead and include that number there, right? Then number seven, optional, if you have siblings, parents, or adult children with the same principal residents who are combining their income with yours by submitting form I-864A, enter the number here. So let's say, for example, you have a brother who lives with you who's going to combine his income um, to support you in your affidavit of support. You would go ahead and put number one here in seven, and then you would also have to include their information in the next part. Um, where it states income that you're using from any other person that was counted in your household size. So, so you would put your brother's name and his income since if you're not filing joint tax returns but he's still in the same residence as you and you're both combining your income, um, you can do so using um, number seven, the optional point, and then filing an 864A form alongside 864. Okay, part six is pretty straightforward. I'm currently employed, just enter your employment information. Um, number seven of part six, my current individual income. Um, this is your current income. So let's say if your income on your last tax return for um, let's say 2019 um, was 25,000, but uh, your employment has changed or you've gotten a promotion and now you make about 40,000 a year. You can support that you meet the minimum requirement um, by submitting proof that your current income has gone up. So this could be you know, your most recent pay stubs or the best thing you could do is get an employment verification letter from your employer that states what your yearly income is um, and send that proof alongside um, the 864 form to support that that is your current individual income. Um, what I mentioned earlier, income that you're using from any other person who was counted in your household size. So let's say if your brother is going to join you and be a household member that adds his income to your minimum requirement for the affidavit of support, you can enter his information here, relationship, and the current income, same for him, what he makes. Um, and then you would file form 864A uh, with your 864 form. Moving on to page five. So in part six, number 20, um, you would go ahead and tally up your income and any other household member that's contributing um, to this affidavit of support their income and put that number over there. Okay. Number, let's skip to number 23A. Have you filed a income tax return for each of the most recent tax years? Yes or no? Um, Let's say you were a student um, before two years ago. So you only have tax returns for the last two years. Um, so you would have to indicate no here. And then on the bottom, it would, you can um, 
indicate on number 25 that I was not required to file a federal tax return as my income was below the IRS required level and I have attached evidence to support this. So you can send proof that you were a student, that you weren't employed, for example, in 2017 and so you didn't have an income that was required to be reported by the IRS. Um, in parts 24A to 24C, a lot of people get stuck on what numbers they have to put there. Um, the number you have to put there is your adjusted gross income. So um, when you look at your tax returns, and I believe it's a little bit different from 2018 to 2019, I don't have the exact line number, um, but read where it says adjusted gross income and that's the number that you would put for the total income. Use of assets to supplement income. Um, a lot of times we see that this is filled out um, most likely incorrectly um, because the guidelines are a little bit unclear um, for most people to understand. So I'll try my best to walk uh, through this with you. So a lot of people think that they have to show um, bank balances and their assets along with um, their proof of income on the 864. But that's not true. You only have to supplement with assets and uh, bank accounts and such if you don't meet the minimum income requirement. So let's say the minimum income requirement for your household size is 25000 and you make 20000 um, Then you would have to go ahead and supplement with the proof of assets. How does that work? So minimum is twenty five thousand. You're making twenty five twenty thousand. That's a difference of five thousand. So if you are sponsoring, if you're a U.S. citizen who is sponsoring for a spouse or a minor child, then we would take that difference between twenty five thousand and twenty thousand. So that's five thousand, and multiply it by three. So that means that you would have to show assets that are worth at least fifteen thousand. In all other cases besides this one, the number that you have to multiply it by is five. So you would take 5,000 and multiply it by five, so that's 25,000. So let's say, for example, you're a joint sponsor or you're petitioning for a, um, your brother or sister. Um, in that case, you would take the difference, which is 5,000 multiplied by five, 25,000, and you would have to show the valuation of your assets that are at least $25,000 in that case. The most common mistake people make um, is they think that assets and income are one-to-one, -one, which is not the case. Um, it's either times five or times three, right? So that is it. These are really the most qu common questions or errors I do see in the 864 form. Um, go ahead and hit like and subscribe to my page. If you would like for me to make another video on this topic with the affidavit of support, or if you'd like more information on the 864A form, which is the household member contract, please leave that comment in the comment box below so that I know that you guys want to see more on this. Thank you for watching and have a great day.